Uh, tonight we talk talk about uh, this king. Uh, how to pronounce this king? Anybody know? Uh, yeah, Abiza. Abiza. Well, I just trying to check with this. Uh, so. Um, Abijah, Abijah is a is a son of a, a Rehoboam. A Rehoboam is a, a son of uh, of Solomon, right? And uh, after after the Rehoboam, he become a successor of this certain kingdom. As a certain kingdom, he's the second king uh, of the south side of the kingdom. Um, chapter thirteen, verse one: In the eighteen years of a king. Uh, Jeroboam. Uh, so the, at that time, uh, from the beginning, uh, when the king Jeroboam was took over the northern side of the kingdoms, and the ten tribes uh, took uh, took and then become a king, and then the s- south side, uh, well, I say um, yeah, ten ten tribes right, and south side uh, the Rehoboam uh, continued success after the um, uh, his father um, Solomon's. Um, so at the, at, this, at the the same year they become a kings. We can say BC 930. Both of them have become a sub, a split of two countries, two kingdoms. Um, according to um, Second Chron- uh, Second Chronicle chapter 13. I mean chapter 12 verse 13. So here they the talk about the king Rehoboam, father of uh, uh, Abiza, uh, the father. Robwams, uh, he when he was 41 years old, and uh, he he become a king, and the 17 years he ruled over. So King uh, Ab- uh, Abize become a king when BC 913. So after 17 years, that he become a king when he was uh, a successor of the Robwams, but he only ruled the nation for only for three years. We don't know what's, what happened to him, but possibly because of uh, um, most of the you know, scholar, uh, the guessing that maybe some kind of illness. So suddenly he died, uh, it happens. So he's a brother, uh, later become a successor of the, the certain kingdom. That's a King Asa. So this is King Asa is not a, the, the son of, a, a son of a, um, uh, Abaize, but actually the Jeroboam's I mean, Rehoboam's son is uh, Asa also. Um, chapter 13, verse 2, so he ruled the nation for three years. And then mention about the, he, his, his mother, uh, verse 2, the, uh, how to pronounce that? Um, Micaiah, Micaiah. Micaiah, Micaiah is, a, is a, do you remember when King Asa, he put his, uh, um, his mother's uh, the position to be removed because he, he worshipped the idol, Asherah. King Asa removed the, his, his mother's position to remove that because he worshipped the idols. I mean, she worshipped the idols. So the Micaiah is the, is the daughter of Absalom. Quite complicated. Yeah, I, that's how they are. But the Second Chronicle 13, verse 2, here you mentioned about the mother's names, of Macar, the, the daughters of the real of givenness. It seems like other, uh, other names actually uh, here introduced. Possibly this is an error of the, you know, the, the scribe, uh, the, the not the right way to describe about this. If you look at the uh, second chronicle chapter 13 and I mean chapter 11 verse 20. This one is a history about the Rehoboam's family. Uh, um, Rehoboam verse 20 and after her he took the Mecca, Mecca the daughter of Absalom and she bore him uh, Ab- Abize. So the Makai is, uh, is a wife of the Rehoboam. Yeah. This is not only this place, but uh, uh, the, 
The, if you look at the first King chapter 15, also mention about the mother. Mother of uh, uh, Abaize is uh, uh, Micaiah from the Absalom's daughters. Yeah, so the Robam's wife is uh, Absalom's daughters. So two plays so we can compare. And chapter 13, verse 2, possibly this is an error. But the most, the, uh, the, the, um, the reasonably, we think about uh, Ab Abiyah's, Ab uh, Abiza's um, mother is uh, Absalom's daughters. Yeah, this is more accurate, uh, I can say. And then after this, uh, they, have a, they have a big fight. Uh, Jeroboam and the king, uh, Jeroboam and Jeroboam, so always they have a fighting for these two countries for over now, so, so far over 17 years. But when uh, King Ab uh, Abiza become a king, there is a big fight. This is, a, we can say, uh, this fighting is the major fighting between the, these northern and southern kingdoms. In chapter 13, verse 3, and Abiza, be, Abiza begin the, the battle with the army of uh, uh, violent a warrior, 400,000 chosen men, uh, while Jeroboam, Jeroboam is a, the king of the you know, northern side of Israel, drew up a battle formation against him with 800,000 chosen men who were violent warrior. So the both sides of this, uh, the all together, 120,000, no, 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 is it 120,000? 1.2, 1 1.0, 1. 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 million, right? It's <laughs> 1.2 million. Huge amount of army both sides. Now they, they collide, these two, two countries. So this is a big fighting. For, we can call the civil war. Both, actually, the south, southern kingdom usually do not attack the northern kingdoms. But usually, northern kingdom of Israel, they always uh, they're trying to attacking the southern kingdoms. But this time, the, 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 lead, uh, the leading by the king, uh, Jeroboam, brought the 800 chosen men. 800 is huge. 400 is, is only half of the numbers. But once, why this number is... Uh, it's a number to all, most of the young men were up this battle. But if you look at the, the first chronicle, chapter 21. First, um, yeah, it's uh, first chronicle, chapter 21, verse 5. This is the number at that time they uh, calculated the most of the most of the in Israel the number, uh, chapter twenty one verse five, and Joab gave the number. This is the, this is during the time of the United Kingdoms, uh, the and the census of all people of David and all Israel's one point one million right one one million hundred thousand men would draw the sword, and the Judah was a four hundred seventy thousands and who would draw the sword. So you can tell that this number, uh, the, uh, during the time of this uh, King uh, Abiza, the time that they come out to two, two sides of the kingdom, collide at that time, the battle Jones, most of the warrior came out to fight. So this is like a full scale of a battle at this time. So. It's not a local battle, but it's a full scale. So. At this time, um, when, uh, because of, uh, the Jeroboam really wants to take over a certain kingdom at this time. So the uh, Abaize came out. Possibly this time they have a, a battle, you know, the formation at the, about the, the, uh, the, the, where is the place? Um, yeah, battle. Around that time, around that, uh, the, the city around there have a fighting this formation at that time. So, so this is the big battle, so. At that time, uh, Abiza, you know, stand up to talk to, uh, to Germ uh, talk to the, uh, the Jeroboam and his, uh, uh, his side of the, the, the soldiers, uh, from verse 4. Then Abiza stood at the Mount uh, Jemariam, because we, we do not know where is the Jemariam anyway, which is in the hill country of Ephraim. Ephraim is include, include the battle. The battle is the south of the south side of the northern kingdoms. The city. And remember the the um, Jeroboam. He took the two uh, idol, put one is the the golden calf and the battle, 
The other one is on the top of north is Donna. So the battle, the, it's a very uh, strategically very important city for the northern, uh, northern kingdoms. Anyway, it belongs to that side. Um, verse 5, do you not know that the Lord God of Israel gave the rule over Israel forever to uh, David and his son by a covenant of salt? It is a reminder of the, the, the northern side of the kingdoms. And this is what a certain kingdom is, uh, is, uh, has, uh, has authority given from God uh, through the covenant uh, between uh, God and the Davids. So it reminds to them, so you're supposed not to attack the southern kingdoms. So he actually wants to solve this, uh, this battle to be peacefully, actually. So it, it reminding them of this is not the right way to you can fight with us. So you better remove you know, your, your army back to Israel. So uh, this covenant is an important covenant for, for the southern kingdom because this is what they're uh, what called um, um, uh, uh, given the authority uh, from God. Uh, let's turn to Second Samuel chapter seven. The, the, what this is in a covenant. Second Samuel chapter seven. When, uh, when King, King David, he, he had a desire to build the temple of God. At that time, God showed up to, showed up to him uh, through the Nathan to give this word to the David. Um, chapter 7, <clears throat> verse from 8. Now therefore this you shall say to my servant David, Thus say the Lord of, uh, of hosts, I took you from the pastures, from following of the ships, and that you should be rulers of my people Israel. And I have been with you, wherever you go, you have gone and have cut off all the, your enemies from before you. And I will make you a great a name, like the names of the great men who are on earth. So they, they talk about, continue to talk about that this is uh, the covenant, the, uh, the God made a covenant between the David. He wants to save his, his, his kingdoms. Yeah, um, verse 12, when your days are complete and you lay down with your father, I will raise, you up, uh, raise up your descendant after you who will come forth from you and I will establish his kingdom. So this is, the, this is the promise. And also he will build the house of my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So given this, uh, the, uh, we can say, uh, 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 give a David of this, uh, uh, the 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 very precious covenants offer to his uh, kingdoms. Uh. So he reminds that uh, they let, the, let the, the northern side go back, but they didn't go back. Uh. And talk about the, talk about the, uh, the Jeroboam, he's a, uh, he's a sin, he'll talk about the verse 7. Jeroboam, son of Nebat, the, the servant of Solomon, son of David. Suppose he served the David in the kingdom, but he's the one split it. And against, the, against his masters, verse 6 mentioned that. So reminding of what he's doing, it's wrong. But of course, he doesn't listen to him anyway. Um, and also, this is not only, only his, his, his problem, but continue once you look at it. He, he's one of the, the, the great sin is verse 8. So now you intend to resist, resist the kingdom of the Lord through the son of David, being a great multitude and having with you the golden calf with the Jeroboam made for God's for you. So remind him for your mistake. What you're doing is not follow the God's way. So stop it, which means what you have done is a great sin that you commit against a God about is a golden calf. But from the no side of the in the kingdom kingdom of Israel, they have to as a, politically it's right. Because all the people, every year, three times, they go to Jerusalem, then he's losing his power. So instead of that, he, he, he draws you know, draw his territory, let them not to go to Jerusalem, but they let them go to Dan and Bethel for the golden calf, the worship. And so which is the, that? Uh, that is actually causing him to be, uh, to be later receive the, um, the judgment of God, actually. Yeah. Um, and verse, verse 9 is what they continue, for, but what they're doing is uh, they do not treat the Levites the right way. 
So actually, the other the Levites on the northern side of the kingdom, they all moved down to the south. Uh, th that's what happened. Uh, Second, Chron uh, Second Chronicles chapter 11, verse 13. Second Chronicles 11, verse 13. Among over the priests and the Levites who were in Israel stood with him from all their district. For the Levites left their pastures, land, and their properties, came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his son had excluded them for serving the priests to the Lord. So you find out, you find out the, the northern side of the Israel the king Jeroboam treated them badly, uh, so the Levites, the people, they all they moved down to the south, to the Jerusalem, and to the kingdom of Judah. So this is a, this is the great sin they committed. Uh, he think uh, this is uh, you know the, his kingdom to be stronger, but he removed all the the authority of a king to remove from his kingdoms. So he actually facing of his judgments. This battle. Is the disjudgments actually? So this battle is a very important battle for uh, put down the, all the power of the north side of the kingdoms. Eight hundred thousand uh, army they came down to south, they're trying to uh, they're, they're destroy the south kingdom. But actually, they were destroyed by the south southern kingdoms. How many people you think uh, you know in this battle? They um, the casualty came out. 800, you know, out of 800, how many people died? Because this battle is a major one, sir. 500,000, they all killed out of 800,000. Can you tell that you can, in the, in the field, 500,000 people were killed among 800. So most of them eliminated. Yeah, once you look at the, what happened here. <clears throat> where's, the, where's, the, where's the verse that 500 died? It's in the chapter 13. Anybody who fast reading? Yeah, thank you. And there's, there's a 500,000, even the number. We do not know exactly even number or not, but roughly we can say this counted number, you think about out of 800,000, 500,000 they were killed by the certain kingdom that the kingdom of Judah, it is completely eliminated. After this uh, battle is done, um, verse 18, we go back to uh, Second Chronicles chapter 13, verse 18. Thus the son of Israel was subdued at that time, and the son of Judah conquered because they trust in the Lord, the God of their father. So, Certain kingdom, kingdom of Judah, they only have a 400,000, only just a half number of soldiers, but they're trying to defend themselves. But God give them, a, God give, a, give them a, the victory. So the, the battle is not belongs to the number. Battle is belongs to God, remember. So it gives us an idea. In your life is success. In your life in the future, you know, whatever in, the, in, in this world, in the field of your life, remember, Put your life to choose the side of God, then God bless you. Because God is being with you. It's very important uh, this battle. After this battle, uh, because they trust in him, and then uh, verse 19, and Abiyazed, uh, Abiyazed pursued Jeroboam and captured from him several cities. The Bethel is the one that with the, it's a village. And uh, Joshana, the with his village, and uh, Ephron, uh, with his. So the southern kingdom, they took over this city at that time. So uh, he mentioned about that. Uh. And verse, uh, verse 20, and Jeroboam did not uh, again uh, recover strength in the day of uh, Abiza, the, the Lord strike him, and he died. So after this battle, this, the, this full scale of battle, he lost, uh, totally lost uh, his, all his strength. Uh, so he died after these battles. It gives us a very um, um, the important teaching. Yeah, battle is it belongs to God. Our life success it belongs to God. It's not based on the number. 
It's not based on the, your capability. It's not based on your abilities. It, everything up to the God's hands. But anyway, when 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 King Abai, uh, uh, Abijah, you know, to, to talk to uh, to the the king uh, Jeroboam to stop this attacking, but you know it happens. But you continue to look at it. Verse 12, Now behold, God is with us at our head and his priest with a signal trumpet to sound the alarm against you, O sons of Israel. Do not fight against the Lord God of your father, for you will not succeed. So here, Abayah is suggesting, uh, advice to him, go back to your, uh, your, uh, your territory. Huh? And you mentioned about it. These are uh, uh, trumpet. If you find out that this trumpet is a very precious trumpet, um, listen to the Numbers chapter 10. Numbers chapter 10. This is made with the, with the silver, and then only, only the Levites, uh, the priests, can blow the trumpet. These the two trumpet is a uh, it's a calling the gathering the, his own people uh, to the to the house of God. Um, verse eight. The priestly sons of Aaron, moreover, shall blow the trumpet, and this shall be for you a perpetual statues uh, statues uh, throughout your generations. Verse nine. And when you go to war in your land against the adversary who attack you, then you shall sound an alarm with a trumpet that you may be remember before the Lord your God be saved from your enemies. So the mention about the, the God, uh, God talked to Moses, the making this uh, trumpet of silver, let this uh, when any enemies come upon to your country. Let the Levites, the priests, blow the trumpet. So this is trumpet reminds about the covenant between God. So it's a God can protect the His, you know, um, we can say His His kingdoms. So the the Second Chronicle chapter thirteen, King Abai Isaiah brought up uh, this uh, this uh, trumpet because you don't have it, but we have this uh, trumpet. Because what that means, God is with us. Because trumpet, we can blow. Yeah. Um, the, if God is with us, God is protect us, no one can harm to us. You know that when David, he was anointed by the Samuel. Because King Saul continued to chase after him, trying to kill him. Even one time, even in front of him, when he brought the spear, King Saul said, this is time I can kill him. So he just threw him, but he cannot kill him. At that time, the king saw he afraid of the David at that time. Sir, because God protected him. If God is with us, nothing to be afraid in your life. The important thing is that you are God's side. God is with you. That's matter. Yeah. So here, the southern side of the kingdoms, only 400,000 uh, 400, uh, soldiers, yet they can defense of the country, those one against 800,000. Not only that, made a great victory. 400,000, you think about it, killed 500,000 soldiers. But it is a sad because it's a, it's a civil war. All people killing each other. Sir. Because the northern side of the King Jeroboam, sir. Such evil men have a have a making a such kind of great uh, we can say um, uh, evil you know make a great sin against God uh, in this way. Uh. So it is kind of sad, actually very sad, uh, um, uh, like a battle. Uh, this is, uh, but yet God gave a victory to the certain kingdom of Judah. Um, and also the chapter thirteen verse eleven. He reminds, he reminds the, the, the Jeroboam, verse 11. Every morning, evening, they burn to the Lord a burnt offering and the fragrance incense. And the showbread is set on the clean tables. 
and the golden lamp stands with its lamp is ready to light every evening, for we keep the charge of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. So he reminds, he, the king Abiah is remind to the Jeroboam, you don't have this you know, golden lamp within you, but we have it. Golden lamp is very important for the Israel because once you go into getting into the holy place, what's inside of the holy place? Anybody can, can recall it? In the holy place? Yes. Ark of Covenant is a holy and holy place. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a separate from the veil, right? So Ark of Covenant is, is with inside, but I'll talk about the holy place when the priests go in and can do it. The one Ark of Covenant, only the high priest can go in there once a year, right? For the atonement day, for the forgiveness of his people. But I'll talk about the you know, holy place. Anybody? What's in the holy place? Any? There's a three things. Very important. Yes. Yes. The bread. There's a 12 bread. Set it up there. Yeah. So this is 12. It's a 12 tribes. It, 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 it's reminding of 12 of them. So the priests go into the real place, you know, every Saturday. Um, anything else? Yes. Gold lamp stands. How many the, uh, the, the lamp is it shows in it? Hopefully you can find it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then the, another one is there. Anybody knows? The one very close to the holy and holy place in front of it. Yes. Yeah, and so, so golden incense, all the three of them. Because uh. these three, because here the, the king Abai, uh, Abai uh, talked to the, the Jeroboam. You don't have this in your kingdoms. Uh. That means God is not with you. Don't fight with us. We have it, which means uh, we have God is within us. We always are uh, lightening up. Uh, the, his, uh, God's uh, you know, light within us. I talk about it. So you talk about the, the, what you're doing is wrong. No matter what, we are not to be defeated by you, which means, so as they go, but they continue to fight against, uh, uh, against uh, 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 to the southern side of the kingdom. Once you look at the verse 13, Jeroboam, now is the they, 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 they kind of, the whole, fa whole you know, soldiers, they're moving down now to trying to formation to attacking, verse 13. But Jeroboam had set an ambush to the come from the real, so that Israel was in front of Ju Judah, and the ambush was behind them. You find out that Jeroboam, he knows how to make a formation to the battle against Israel. 800,000 yet, he's fighting. They already have a, he's a well-trained army to setting up for ambush, which means they know how to eliminate the southern side of the soldiers. But northern, southern side of the, 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 uh, the army is just come, just battle, and it just uh, purely just, uh, you know, I think defense against the northern side. So who can win this battle if this is in a human point of view? Because Jeroboam knows how to fight. But King Abai Aziz is not really, actually. Only brought up 400,000. Thousand to trying to defend the nation. That's all, man. And uh, verse 14. When Judah turned around, behold, they were attacking both the front and the rear. Think about this. Once the formation turned out to this way, they are the one defeated by the northern kingdoms. So they cry to the Lord, and the priests blow the trumpet here. We find out here how, how there's a certain kingdom of the king Abayazir and his soldiers to defend themselves, only they cry out to God. As God's help. The God remember. God remember them. And the verse 15, they cried out even. Uh, and they even cried. Uh, <clears throat> 
Verse, uh, verse 15. Uh, then the men of Judah raised a war cry. When the, when the men of Judah raised uh, the war cry, then was the God routed Jer Jeroboam and all Israel before Abiaziah and Judah. And the 16. And when the son of Israel fled before Judah, God gave them into their hands. So the battle, battle is up to the God's hands. It's not the man's hands. Remember, some of the questions I mentioned that you want to go to the good college, right? You want to go to good college. So you can, you can skip the Sabbath because you have a greater you know, goal for your life. Maybe because you are, you are capable, you are very smart enough to your, you know, your um, academic achievements. So maybe put God as a secondary, but you, you, you choose your life, the, your, your maybe academic first, Remember, it's not your success. It belongs to your academic, you know, excellent careers. Your success is not. It's not because of your great point you got from the your school. I don't think so. When God doesn't give you the chance, you cannot be success. Any field that you go, you find out that any CEO, because they have all A, they can be a CEO, do you think? Is there anybody who success, you know, success business because they all A? No, because they all came from the harbor to say become a successor, you know, success in this world. No. Without the God's help, none of us can be a prosper in our life. Everything is God's hands. Let's look at the first first Samuel. When the the hand of prayer, right? First Samuel chapter, chapter 2, verse from 6. It's good to read from the first, but you know, we don't have time. So, First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. The Lord kills and make alive. And he bring down to shallow to rise up. And the Lord make a poor and rich. He bring low. He also exalt. The mention about 6 and 7. Everything is in the God's hand. He mentioned about it. Verse 7, verse 7 is make a poor, make a rich. It all, everything, it's. In the God's hands. Verse 8. He raised the poor from the dust. He lifted the need from the ash heaps to make them sit with the nobles and inherit the seat of owners. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. That means everything is, belongs to God. If you, want to have a, if you want to have a true success in your life, I'm not talking about the one field of you know, academic field. I'm not talking about the later your life, after you finish college, you go your, your field, you can be success. But without true joy within you, your life is not success. Success is a come from the security from God. If God gives you secure your life, maybe your force compared like no, no side of the kingdom, they have 800,000 soldiers. Certain side is only 400,000, but who become a winners in these battles? The one who got with them of only 400,000 soldiers. So this one gives us very important teaching for us. Where, where you want to belong to, like a northern side or a southern side. If God is with you, you know how to you know, blow the trumpet to God for God's help. You are not that smart enough like a north side. Jeroboam already ambushed to the, the, the behind the front, trying to squeeze them to kill them all. But they cried out, God help the one in the middle of them, you know, King uh, Abiyaz. It, uh, um, the second, second chronicle, chapter 13, uh, Abiyaz, if you look at the, the first king, chapter 15, he's not the kind of good king that recorded in the, in the, you know, the king of uh, the Second Chronicle, I mean First Chronicle, I mean First King. But here in the Chronicle, it really uh, here shows his uh, greatness about his uh, victory and his uh, prospering. But only his his life uh, three three years ago, but he he died. Uh, that we don't know what's what's in the there because the Bible doesn't uh, record it here. Um, verse verse eighteen is the key. We can say. Thus the son of Israel will subdue at the time. The son of Judah 
conquered because they trust in the Lord, the God of their father. As long as in your life you trust in God, if you, if you trust in God, no matter what the condition you are situated, God help you. God help you. You need this faith. You need this faith. Yeah. Your success is not depends on the academic achievements. But your success, it depends on how much you can trust in God. That's in your success. Pretty much, this is a chapter, chapter 13. We'll talk about, because King Abai Azai is not a famous king in the Bible recorded. This king is only, this, you know, this, this one battle, it's just recorded here. Yeah. So, but after that, he died. And also, this battle is a contribute to the northern kingdom that King Jeroboam no longer to be regained the strength, but he died because of this battle, after this battle. So, yeah. Um, well, we have about five minutes, so we can just think about the simple three things that we can, uh, we'll throw out these chapters. Uh, we need a victories in your life. Uh, don't you think? Anybody here who wants to fail in your life, raise your hands. Uh, yeah, if you raise your hand, you are considered as a foolish, right? So don't be the one. You have the victory in your life. Yeah. The, um, the, the three points that we can think about, I just threw out this you know, chapter, we learned that first, put your life in the God's side. That's the important part. Put God's side. Then God will be with you. Um, also, you have to withdraw from the sin. You should not to close the sin. The northern side of the king of Jeroboam, he has a great power of a military. He has a ten tribes within. So he has a power, support behind. But he commits sin. He worshipped, he let the people worship an idol, the two you know, golden calf. Then put one in the, in the battles. He created the sin. We should not, we, we have to remember, we worship in God only in our life. Jesus mentioned that do not, do not serve the two masters in your life. Just to serve one master. You will reward it. That reward will be great. And also third one, trust him. Very simple. This is the three key of the victories of this battle that we can learn from it. And also another one is uh, when you are in a difficult times in your life you're facing, don't think that life is always in a happy moments all the time. You know, all the time your life will continue to, you know, you know, going up. No, sometimes going down too. Sometimes you're facing of difficulty. Sometimes your trial upon to your life. It happens. This is, what are you going to do? Pray to God. Let's turn to the book of James. James chapter 5, verse 13. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. I mentioned that the, the, you know, in, the, in the, the original word, the Hebrew words, it doesn't have a thanksgiving, but praising God. You know, it's a confess. Our showing of a thanksgiving is through the praising God. That's the meaning of thanksgiving. And so let him sing praise. It's the same thing like a prayer. Prayer with a thanksgiving. When you're a difficult time, prayer with, a, with a, you know, your heart cried out. And when you are cheerful, pray with a thanksgiving. Yeah. Prayer is a key. And when, especially when you're a difficult time, don't forget that. Pray to God. And also, um, the when, uh, when you cried out, then God can fight for you. You have to trust him. You don't have to fight. God fight for you. You find out in the, in the, in the Bible, you find out there. And every time the, the king trusts in God, then God fight for them. And also the last one, also the same thing, trust in God. Now all this victory is it came from God in the God's hands. I hope God can help your, your path, you know, because your age is very important because there's a, there's a now you are uh, heading toward to a, a high school, then a temptation is different degree. Huh? When you are E2, you don't have any, any, um, 
any kind of temptations. But temptation is only to talk back to your parents. But now it's a different, different temptation with you, right? The issue about the, you know, about the internet. Even you say that, you know, is that okay to see the, pro-? you know, I say, no. <laughs> and I say, is that, is that help us, you know, help us our spiritual life with uh, have a, you know, the, uh, the, um, the boyfriend girlfriend? No. So what I'm saying is that here we talk about, talk about the, um, it's it's a very different kind of now stage you are in. You're facing of different temptations different challenges. Hopefully through the trust in God, uh, you can make victories. Remember, Satan is stronger than you. I'll let you know that. You know that too. Satan is stronger than you. That's why we have to pray to God. Because we are weaker. We need God's help in our life. Victory is come from the God's hands. It's not my hands. Don't dare to approach to the sin. The sin the power is stronger than you. I'll let you know that. That's why we need a prayer. <clears throat> Q&A, there's a, there's a discussion. What are we going to discuss after that? I don't know. There's a, there's, so I don't have to do it. Somebody else is doing it? I finished, right? Okay, let's pray in silence then. Amen. <clears throat>